Hey, Mike back here once again at Canadian Music Week, uh, last day of the conference going on again at the Sheridan Centre Hotel, but with me is Montreal-based singer-songwriter Candle. Candle Osborne goes by just Candle. And, Apparently, uh, like Madonna or exactly, Seal. Exactly. Seal? Let's go with Madonna. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great start. Great. <laughs> Greatest EP, Damned If I Do, is now out, uh, led by the lead-off singles, uh, Bender and uh, When My Body Breaks, in which you team up with Peter Drymanis of uh, Joy Talk, which I'd what like a man. to uh, get into. My and, God. Uh, He's so oh, good. <laughs> on that note, then, let's, let's start with that. Um, for When My Body Breaks, huh? did you know Peter? Or essentially, just how did that connection come about? Uh, we're on the same record label, and we had had a few conversations before, and he said that he loved my songwriting and my music, and I, it took me like three months to work up the courage to ask him, and I sent him a little email, I'm like, what, what, would you, would you please? <laughs> and he was so nice, and I was recording at my dad's studio at the time in, yeah. in Victoria in the basement yeah. with the dog, and he was yeah. playing on tour, and he just stopped by the house and yeah. did like one take. And I was just like, that's your that's voice? Like, oh, you're so cool. So it was a one take wonder and he's great. He certainly has a recognizable voice, like that yeah. deep, deep growl. I'm so which jealous. Which doesn't seem to match with like, you look at him and you're not I expecting know. that voice to come out. I wasn't expecting it to be a speaking voice too. He's like yeah. Batman on the phone, like, hey, that's a good, wow. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so for the, sorry, is it five, six songs? I'm trying to remember oh my God. from uh, Damned If I Do. Five, I think. Five. For the, uh, such a, when did the songs start coming about? Like how far back does this EP go songwriting wise? Really far back. Okay. Uh, essentially, I got stuck in some, some less than ideal deals okay. and I did some team yeah. switches and I got a bit trapped for a few years, mm -hmm. so I've basically been writing and recording for the last six years. Yeah. And there's a whole lot of songs ready to go, but the label's like, let's start with five randoms. Yeah. That's damned if I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair Because it was In Flames was your LP in mm -hmm. 2014. So long ago. And, oh. uh, so old now. I, it might be a sensitive topic, but I'm curious what happened there that people can, and you know, for our audience so they can learn from it too. What happened there? career-wise that you're referring to and I guess you don't have to reveal anything you don't want to reveal but I, mean, I have to be careful about what I say <laughs> but basically to any new artist out there mm -hmm. read what you sign be that's careful a, that's, that's a good have lawyers now. and make sure you're not trapped because mm -hmm. basically it was out of my control and I right. I trusted some wrong people mm -hmm. and I, it ended up being solved but I think a lot of people are under the impression that artists are able to do what they want and make music and release it, yeah. but it, it's not true when you sign your life away. <laughs> Who's the label you're now with? Uh, I'm now with Sleepless Records here, right. so it's uh, July Talk, Michael Roll, yeah. and some really good people. What is it, having gone through that experience uh, of you know being trapped, as you put it, um, I'm sure that would put your guard up when it comes to any kind of label deals from that point forward. So what was it about Sleepless that you were comfortable enough to, to sign with them? Uh, they were just very involved and really supportive and uh, I, I just, it was a long time coming yeah. and I was talking to them a lot and the marketing manager and I became like really close and yeah. I just started trusting them and I know they believe in me so I hope, I hope I made the right decision. <laughs> In those intervening years then, how did your art change? Like, how are the songs on Damned If I Do and what the other ones that, you, uh, that you're working on? Such a house compared to In Flames. Well, I got pushed really hard, which at first I hated and I was getting, I totally broke down in the studio a lot and I was getting made to sing the same song 200 times until four in the morning and crying and like, producer yelling like I'm still not feeling it from you and <laughs> who was the producer <laughs> well I had a few but okay. I had the, like John and Yellow is really sweet yeah. uh, Alex Bonifant who yep. was one of the owners of Sleepless and they just wanted me to to uh, get as good as Thank I could you. possibly be yeah. and get out of my comfort zone and they just kept telling me like you're a good singer and a good writer but like do something yeah. beyond that like mm -hmm. scream make your voice crack like okay. lose your mind a bit and be really really honest and brutal and so some of the songs we redid like 15 times yeah. until we thought we got it right. But that's the only good thing about having taken so long is I definitely got, became a better writer and performer and took a lot of risks, which is fun. On the songs I'm damned if I do, 
there's definitely the singer-songwriter quality to them, but there's also a darkness to the vibe of it. It kind of reminds me, if you don't mind me making the comparison, it reminds me a bit of like a Nick Cave sort of feel. I love you so much right now. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Greatest compliment of my life. We are now best friends. And maybe he's an influence. I'm not... Uh, oh. oh! Okay. Yeah, think. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of my hero. Okay. I well, might have go. a shrine for him in my bedroom. We don't know. It's a rumor. Well, I guess with that, I was wondering, like, essentially, was that a conscious vibe that you were trying to create across the record? Uh, not really. I think a lot with many artists, you can pick up on their influences in their music, yeah. and he's definitely a big one for me. But, I mean, in terms of, of the darkness, it's writing is very therapeutic for me, and yeah. I was trying to tackle some, some issues I feel like I haven't faced as a, a person and put into music and, and dealing with, like past memories of traumatic sexual abuse when I was little and uh, being having a chronic pain condition where I'm in and out of hospitals and on a lot of medication and all these heavy things that I feel like I haven't processed. And then the only way I know how to get it out of my body and my being is yeah. putting it into music, and, which sometimes ends up being terrifying. Yeah. And people are like, why are you so scary? <laughs> <laughs> and not in person. Was this always, I'm sure you get this question a lot, so I guess I apologize, but I, I'm actually curious. Like, obviously, um, I don't want to harp on the fact that your father's Neil Osborne, obviously, is uh, from Man of 5440. I know of him. Yeah, he might, might, might ring a, yeah. yeah. I think I like that guy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so, in that regard, was just being a musician, being a songwriter, something that was just always there as what you were going to do? Or was it something that you embraced later? It was kind of a mistake. I was, uh, I went to photography school after high school and I was working as a photographer and playing in a few bands for fun and mm -hmm. I decided to make this the first EP in my basement for mm -hmm. fun. I got Sammy Goldberg from Broken Social Scene to play on it with me and I just posted on Facebook initially and then started getting some offers for record deals and stuff and I was very scared when I started. I was a terrible performer and really shy and like would shake like crazy but it just everything switched, priorities switched and I, I realized how much I love music and I mean, my dad says that I'm an idiot but <laughs> he's like don't follow me, what a mistake. Well it's funny because what with most people, even most musicians, would consider the likelihood of having a music, you know, making your career and livelihood off of music as like the equivalent of winning the lottery sort of thing. Totally. <laughs> That's why he's like, don't do it. But, but I'm, what I'm curious about is being in a family who, you know, your, family, your family's livelihood was made through a music career. I'm guessing that would give you a totally different perspective than someone else. Like it would make it seem more viable or more likely. Is that the case? Or did your father... Uh, uh, it, it you kind of is. I mean, he's he's definitely showed me how, how yeah. hard it is, and it's crazy to see someone like him that has gold records and has so many hits still, like, he's not able to stop working, not even close. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, like, own the house, you know? He's still mm -hmm. working. Yeah. He's like, this is not easy, and you have to be prepared for that. Yeah. And I guess I am. Like, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> <laughs> You've dived in now, so now you have no choice. Yeah. yeah. Too late. I'm stuck. <laughs> And lastly, uh, you mentioned your state, well, I don't think you used the word, but essentially stage fright when you were starting off, um, which certainly isn't an uncommon experience, but now you're a very, you are a very confident performer, and you, I was looking at your social media beforehand, and uh, the reaction to your uh, show at the Horseshoe. Yeah, that went really July well. The other night, you got like, an immensely positive uh, reaction yeah. online. And uh, you seem to be one of the really buzzed about artists at CMW this year. Yes! That's great! <laughs> From not playing it for two years to that, I'm like, well, yeah! Exactly. So I'm, okay. I, I'm wondering how you overcame those nerves on stage. Uh, right? If you're wondering if I threw up side stage, I did. Okay. I was shaking like crazy, <laughs> and it's just. Uh, as soon as I am playing and get into it, it gets better, but yeah. it's hard to not overthink and be scared and yeah. like there's a room full of people watching you and you can't really mess up. Like, yeah. they, they'll notice and you can't, <laughs> there's no room for failure and that, that gets to me a lot. Yeah. And being in charge of the whole band and being the band leader and it, it's just a lot, but it does get easier. Yeah. And the new band I have right now, they're incredible. I love them so much. I, I have like a 20 year old that just blows my mind and these guys are great. As long as we stick together and enjoy what we do, the stage fright gets better. <laughs> nice. Well, Kendall, uh, I think this is the last 
tomorrow's the last day officially of the festival, but I hope it's been a good one for you. It, it certainly has. seems like it has. And uh, so again, for folks, Candle Osborne, just look for her as Candle with a K, by the way. And uh, I didn't name myself. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> and latest EP is Damned If I Do. It is certainly worth checking out. Candle, thank you for this. Thank you, my friend. Cheers.